One year after his death at the Lake of the Ozarks, Brandon Ellingson's family is still looking for justice. His death investigation uncovered several mistakes that were made by a Missouri state trooper who arrested him. KCCI's Ryan Smith traveled to the Ozarks just this week and has the investigation for us tonight. Kevin and Stacy, the Ellingsons claim the facts surrounding their son's investigation were swept under the rug. Now tonight, for the first time, an eyewitness is speaking out. One of Brandon's friends who was with him moments before the drowning. I miss him tremendously. When parents experience the pain of outliving their child. This is a photo of a senior picture. He always had that smile on his face. They find ways to keep the memory alive. Craig Ellingson. Really a huge tribute to Brandon. Has done just that. It's been one year since his 20-year-old son drowned on the Lake of the Ozarks while in law enforcement custody. The world seems like a not a better place without Brandon. May 31st, 2014, just after 5 p.m., Brandon and his friends leave Coconuts Caribbean Bar, located on the northwest side of the lake. I still don't want to believe it. But Friend Brody Bauman was on Ellingson's boat that fateful day. Trooper Anthony Piercy arrested Brandon for boating while intoxicated. Once he handcuffed Brandon and put the life jacket on him, he rolled back around to us, and that's when he kind of got smart. With us. Ellingson's friends, including Brody, watched from just feet away. Just left us seven with the boat while he, him and Brandon took off. We're about three miles south of Coconuts. This is the exact spot where eyewitnesses tell KCCI they spotted the trooper's boat passing by at speeds of 35 to 40 miles per hour. Just moments later, they saw Brandon's body in the water, but recall the trooper was in no hurry to help him. Do you believe Trooper Piercy did everything he could to save Brandon Ellingson? From my perspective, no. Larry Moreau and his family were in another boat and could see Brandon in the water. What I watched over the next, you know, 30 seconds gave me the impression there was no emergency. In reality, Brandon was fighting for his life. The 180-pound former football standout was restrained treading like hell to keep his head above water. He was handcuffed with no life jacket after it popped off over his head. Later, Piercy admitted to using the wrong type of life jacket and only slid it on over Ellingson's handcuffed arms. I mean, he was just a, a couple, three feet away from him and didn't even bend over to get him. I reached out to the trooper this week for comment on these claims but have not heard back. Video recordings obtained by KCCI give us insight into how Piercy reacted just minutes after he jumped in trying to save Brandon. I don't know if I'm uh, sore from treading water with the bastard, but I just was spit. To know that he uh, was pretty much heartless and could have saved him. He had a couple opportunities to get him out of the water and didn't do it. The pain of losing his son is still there, but Brandon's father has found renewed strength. It's really, truly amazing that all the lives Brandon touched in, all the, in the short 20 years. Last fall, a jury cleared Trooper Piercy of any criminal negligence. However, a new special prosecutor is now reviewing the evidence, and investigators, I learned, re-interviewed several key witnesses in this case. Now, despite making several calls this week, I have not yet heard back from that Missouri prosecutor. The family's course for justice now stands with a civil lawsuit against Trooper Piercy and multiple officials with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Craig will travel down to Jefferson City for depositions May 31st. Also, the U.S. Attorney General is examining the case to see if any federal laws were violated in this situation. Ryan Smith, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. Thank you, Ryan. For a closer look at Ryan's investigation, including complete full interviews with the witnesses, head to our website, kcci.com.